Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, the market is up massively and people are losing their minds, so I thought it'd be good just to start off with a little reality. So first up, a new Ethereum DeFi token is literally up 100,000% in a week and why this is actually not a great thing. Also, hyperinflation hits Lebanon, food prices soar 200%, biggest crisis since Civil War, and this is all can be related back to quantitative easing or money printing. ESPN announces online gaming that allows Bitcoin deposits and withdrawals, and the reason for this is simple, esports is going to be massive. And finally, this is going to become probably my new favorite section, I'm going to actually answer uh, some hard-hitting questions that people uh, send to me via email. But first, let's take a look at this sweet, sweet market. Uh, if you've been around for a long time, or a while like I have, some of you have been around since 2010, so uh, you know, great for you. But uh, I've been here since uh, 2017. I don't know how, how uh, long you've been here, but these are the days that we live for. These are the days that are just fantastic. Bitcoin's up. If, if you've invested in Bitcoin, this is a good day, I suppose. Uh, it's up 17% for the week, uh, just 9% in 24 hours, all the way to 10.7. And the market cap, total market cap itself, is 322 billion. So we were sitting at 260 for quite some time, and all of a sudden, Little little switch gets flipped, and here we are. Uh, Ethereum all the way up to 322, 5.2%. Uh, Tether's Tether, XRP 22 cents. Watch out. Bitcoin Cash 8.7. Cardano down 3%, but up 14% for the week. But what are you going to do? And actually, over this weekend, um, there was a mainnet uh, discovery. They were actually doing a lot of things with uh, going into the new Shelly net, the mainnet launch, and they were doing a lot of different tests. And they said if the tests uh, showed any kind of bugs or any kind of problems, they would shut it down and they would uh, go back to square one. But apparently everything looks good and they're going to move forward. However, the price did not reflect that. So, hey, what are you gonna do? That's crypto. Bitcoin almost 10%, Litecoin almost 10%, crazy. Crypto.com, which I really need to take a look at. I've been hearing, I've been seeing in the comment section, uh, you know, different things from people saying, hey, check out Crypto.com. And I just haven't got around to it, but I will. EOS, <laughs> EOS, 5.2%. Uh, look at all that stuff. So pretty good day. Uh, if these are the days that, uh, you know, people hear about, and they're probably going to start to talk to you at some point, if they haven't already said, hey, what's up with this Bitcoin? What's up with this Ethereum? What's up with this DeFi? And uh, this is the time we get to sit back and just smirk and go, eh, I told you if you just would have listened to me. But I need you to remember some lessons. And we're going to take a look at a little bit of history uh, because you have to remind people and maybe just remind yourself uh, that to not lose your mind and not go FOMO because this is the time to keep a level head. Let's break into today's stories. So first up, this one's kind of depressing. Uh, a new Ethereum DeFi token is literally up 100,000% in a week. And when I saw that, I was like, what the heck is going on? So I had to read the whole thing. This is from Nick Chong. He's been around since 2013, says his bio. He's a pretty uh, uh, crypto enthusiast, owns some Bitcoin, so he's probably got some bias just like me. Uh, but he writes pretty well, and uh, I seem to uh, like the way that he does things. So uh, starting with this article, it states, Ethereum's DeFi's new darling coin Yearn.finance gains 100,000% in a week. And I was like, I have never even heard of this. What is going on? And if you remember in 2017, if you were around then, you would hear about all these crazy tokens and these ICOs being uh, you know, put out, and they would gain you know, 10,000%, 50,000%. And it was just amazing from one day to the next. But um, as soon as it started to actually get to where it was released, then all of a sudden it would drop down to the bottom and it would fluctuate and everything else and people were holding bags. And uh, I'm starting to see some things about DeFi. I don't really like that look like a lot of things that happened in the past. Now, I'm not saying DeFi is going to go away, just like cryptocurrency didn't go away with the ICOs. But um, I just want to just want to stress caution uh, out there. Don't lose your, your mind. I kind of did that in 2017. So you have to learn from mistakes. It doesn't have to be your mistakes. Let them be my mistakes that you learn from me. And uh, just be a little uh, level-headed. Anyhow, to go on to this article, it states... At least for the time being, Ethereum DeFi investors are moving on from the tried and true investments of Chainlink and Synthetix and are focusing their efforts on new players. Last week, the developers of Yearn.Finance, aka iEarn Finance, recently launched Ethereum based DeFi platform, rolled its native token Wi Fi, which is pretty funny, Wi Fi. Like many other DeFi protocols, the token was distributed through a liquidity mining incentive system 
where investors that use the protocols get the coin as a reward. So again, sure, whatever's going on, I guess this is good, but uh, it just seems a little, a little off that uh, you know you invest a little bit, you get all these types of coins, and all of a sudden, boom, it's uh, you know hundred thousand up. According to analyst uh, Andrew Kang, at three thousand dollars. Wi-Fi is up a thousand times. That's to say a hundred thousand percent since it's launched around eight days ago. So right now you're kicking yourself, right? You're like, man, I wish I would have heard about that. I would have invested. I would have put 10 bucks into that. Who knows? But um, again, I'm here to stress it's not, I mean, this thing could be huge, right? But, or it could crash the ground. You never know. But, but Kang states, Wi-Fi is now the second 1000X I've seen the last few weeks. For those questioning the math, the balancer pool launched at $3 Wi-Fi, but CMC and CoinGecko did not start tracking the price until sometime after. So here we go. From 18 July 2020, it was around $34. And then we went all the way up here to this ridiculous amount of $4,500. That is not sustainable. That is not sustainable. That is not sustainable. And even the... Uh, the Bitcoin price going up a thousand dollars in a day—that is not sustainable. I don't see a parabolic bull run like we saw in 2017, where there was about a month of just parabolic uh, price action. I just don't see that. Now this one uh, could go back down, but again, who knows? So moving on, this is where it gets a little crazy. So what's especially absurd about the rally in this Ethereum-based token is that in the launch's medium post, Yearn's main developer asserted that the token has zero value. Read the following. We have released Wi-Fi, a completely valueless zero supply token. We reiterate, it has zero financial value. There is no pre-mine, there is no sale, no, you cannot buy it. Uh, no, it won't be on Uniswap, no, there won't be an auction, we don't have any of it. The developer is telling you this is trash, or we're not using it for some type of price action. That's not what, we're, what it's here for. And people are like, whatever. And they just go ahead and they, they try to get it, and they get it, and all of a sudden it's boom, it's through the roof. And then uh, lastly, it states, Molly, who is some lady who works in the Crypto Space Insider, states, hey, this is pretty much all over the, we, the WeChat groups. I guess she must be in China. Yeah, China. I am in I am in or talking about Wi-Fi. Many people I've known are trading Wi-Fi. I would say Wi-Fi is by far the hottest new DeFi project in Chinese crypto space, she commented, commented. Tony, 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 Tony Shang, formerly of Multicone Capital, released a subtract blog entitled Wi-Fi Ponzi-nomics, in which he outlined how the asset has a design that promotes price appreciation. The blog outlines how the client's or asset's low circulation supply, which is only 30,000 coins max. Demand drivers through governance and staking and rigged pools are voice of forcing prices higher. So again, with prices setting in, things going up, I think this is like just a perfect opportunity for this to capitalize. And... Uh, just remember the lessons of the past. You had your ICOs, you had your BitConnect, and everybody thought this was the greatest thing of all time. And you still see people talking about it, and they're still recovering, and they still got wrecked. So uh, just be careful out there. That's all. All right, let's move on to the next point. Next, next up, hyperinflation hits Lebanon. Food prices soar 200%. Um, this just concerned me because of what's going on. Uh, right here in the U.S. If you don't know, I'm just going to scroll all the way down. Uh, EU leaders approve 2.1 trillion budget. U.S. lawmakers are expecting another round of COVID-19 relief money. And uh, Steve Mnuchin, the Treasury Secretary, said, "Yeah, we're going to do the exact same thing that we did last time from the CARES Act. It's going to be about 1,200 bucks. And we're going to do the, the PPP, the Paycheck Protection Program, and we're just going to print money. And uh, that's the same thing going on as far as quantitative easing. Now, uh, let me just read the articles before people who are um, armchair economists and they're like no no no, that's not true because i read a book and uh sure hold on so lebanon has become the first country in the middle east and north africa region in history to experience hyperinflation explained steve h hankey professor of applied economics at the john hopkins university and a hyperinflation expert he states now there are two ongoing hyperinflations Lebanon's, where the annual inflation rate is 462%, and Venezuela's, where the annual rate soared at 2200%. Plus percent. And then uh, he states, the underlying causes of inflation are always the same. The professor was quoted, governments start running larger and larger fiscal deficits and call on the central bank to fund those deficits because tax and bond financial avenues are inadequate. In hyperinflation, central banks are required to virtually fund the government's entire fiscal operation. So I know people in the comment section will say, but you don't understand. You, you, Rob, you don't understand. Uh, it's because um, 
the dollar is so strong globally and it is the world reserve currency, we will never have hyperinflation. Hey, you may be you may be right. I'm not an economist. I think I pretend to even be. Uh, but I can just tell you that uh, when I look at these types of things and I see the same things happening over and over again, how much money can we print? How far can we get pushed out? How much debt can we actually be in before it's all games off or all hands off? So I just think to myself, is this sustainable? Is this sustainable? Could we just not work the rest of our lives and just have the printing pressures go willy-nilly? QE, that's fine, quantitative easing. Because to me, it just seems like a, uh, a big shell game, but it could be incorrect. Going over all these, all these types of information, the only thing that really this comes down to is that it's economic policy. And it's economic policy set forth by the Federal Reserve. And because of the things that they're doing, this is actually helping out uh, Bitcoin's use case as far as store of value. It helps out cryptocurrencies. It helps out digital assets. Even Mike Novogratz uh, in the Unchained podcast, you know, uh, he was quoted as saying, the reason why Bitcoin and different cryptocurrencies are going to appreciate is because of monetary policy and all the quantitative easing. And it's going to lead people to understand and go, hey, Maybe I should hedge my bets. Even Shamath uh, Palihapitiya says this is schmuck insurance. That is what Bitcoin is for, and you know, to a lesser extent, uh, all cryptocurrencies, digital assets. So when we have these types of policies coming into place, uh, there is money being printed at uh, all hours of the night, uh, 24/7, and it's just you know money out of thin air. Uh, I think this strengthens the case, and this will lead to an even bigger rally for digital assets. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on. Next up, not going to spend too much time on this. I just thought it was an interesting story. Not too much to it. I mean, really, the, art, the title says it all. ESPN announces online gaming that allows Bitcoin deposits and withdrawals. But there's a little caveat here. They're actually going to um, uh, initiate an IEO and going to set forth their own cryptocurrency, which is kind of interesting. So ESPN Global has announced the launch of a blockchain-powered gaming platform. That's pretty cool. Uh, An ESPN Global Director, Mr. Chris Parker, spoke on the attraction of blockchain. He states, as per a research done by 3EA Limited, a global strategic management consulting group, esports and online gaming is a $140 billion global industry driven predominantly by digital microtransaction economies, which we believe will benefit immensely from the integrity and resilience of the blockchain technology. I'm going to tell you also why they're going to do it. It's because if you have watched ESPN for a long time like myself, you have realized lately it has sucked because there are no sports on. Now, there's some sports going on right now, um, but like Major League Baseball is going on. But if you, I just saw an article that the Marlins Orioles game is postponed due to a COVID-19 outbreak from 11 player cases. So it's actually spreading throughout the professional baseball players. So what does that do for your bottom line if you're ESPN? Oh, well, you can't show any uh, sports and you are a sports channel. So what are you doing? Well, the first thing you have to do is go, well, all right, all the talking heads, you guys start talking. But there's only so much I can listen to, to people talking about sports. I want to see sports. I want to watch what's watch going on. So what do they do? They put on eSports. And they've been put on eSports for a while, especially because of the lockdown. And what they realized was, hey, there's a lot of uh, eyeballs for eSports. Not only is there a lot of eyeballs, there's a lot of money in eSports. So this is from the Influencer Marketing Hub, and this talks about eSports revenue growth. Now, I do get it. It makes sense. Um, it's pretty interesting to watch people uh, play games who are like at the top of their of their craft. I, I, I can appreciate that. And it's amazing to see the actual like, money that is actually being poured into this. So 2016, it was $493 million. 2017, there was a 33% year-over-year growth to 655. 2018, 906, and they're predicting in 2021, uh, 1.6 billion dollars. So, uh, if there's a reason for ESPN to get into it, well, it makes a lot of sense because who knows how long this coronavirus is going to be around? Who knows if there's going to be a resurgence? And who knows what's going to happen with sports? They don't want to go away. They've got a good thing going. So, what are they going to do? Let's hop on the train and let's get esports to go. And what is great about esports is what he says right here. Uh, global industry driven predominantly by digital micro transaction economies. People in these esports or these games themselves, they are buying non I mean, uh, different aspects or different things that they can buy in gaming, and they're going to use cryptocurrency digital assets. So I think this is a fit. I mean, it's their only move that they got. And it's a smart move because uh, you got to really got to hedge your bets. Maybe sports all come back. Maybe not. 
Who knows? But pretty good idea. And it states here, ESPN Global expects to launch an IEO of its smart gaming token based on the ERC-20 platform. So um, they're doing all the right moves, right? They're getting everything in place because they're like, hey, we don't know what's going to happen. So let's make some money. Let's jump on the bandwagon and let's do two of the things, cryptocurrencies and esports. Let's make some money. And that's what's going on. All right, on to my next favorite topic. So here we have uh, questions. I get questions randomly through people that just send them to my email. Usually I don't really, because um, the email is both mostly for business inquiries. I answer most of the questions in the uh, comment section of every video. At least I try to, to my best abilities. Um, but this one was a pretty good question. And I, I don't like to answer individual people because if I just do that, I only teach you right? So if I answer the question in the comment section, that means that I answer it to everybody who reads that. And uh, for this one, I thought it was too good not to go away from. And I thought, well, I just, I'll just teach everybody. So this is from Alessandro. He says, hey, I got a couple questions about Celsius. He's got two questions. He says, how safe is my crypto on there? Do you have an insurance or do they have insurance? I don't have insurance. Do they have insurance in case their security gets compromised? And two, while I want to store a good amount on there, to collect maximum interest. I also don't want to store too much in my portfolio for security reasons. What would you say is a good ratio uh, stored in Celsius versus a ledger cold storage? So I can just tell you that uh, for me, it fluctuates. It's somewhere between 10 and 25% on Celsius because um, I believe in Celsius. I don't, it's, the Celsius network is fantastic, but what really makes it and really drives it is Alex Mashinsky, the CEO. He's kind of like Steve Jobs and Apple. If you were looking at Apple, you knew Apple would work because Steve Jobs was behind the helm and he kind of just kind of ran everything, just as was. But and Alex Mashinsky is the same type of guy. So I believe in that guy and the people that he puts around him is are probably good people from what I can see so far. So that's to answer the second question. The first question is a little bit more complex. And just to, just so you know, if you go into the description of every one of my videos, there's going to be a listing of all the different exchanges and wallets that I, I use now or have ever used. And the reason I've created this is because I was so sick and tired of Coinbase shutting down and having problems and customer service sucking. And uh, I, was, I was in Coinbase forever. And then I just, you know, started to branch out because I read the comment section for everybody to tell me that, hey, check this out, check this out, check this out. Now, they weren't all awesome. Some were awful. But these are the ones that I like. And uh, you can click on that uh, link. It looks just like this. And when you click on it, it'll take you to this, this uh, spreadsheet. And you can notice at the very top, uh, it's uh, everything from Coinbase to my one-two punch, which is uh, uh, Voyager for what I buy, and then Celsius. Yes, I will get to crypto.com. It does look pretty good. I just got to get to it. And then uh, I got Gemini, Binance, Uphold, Simple Swap, Crack, and Cash App, and my least favorite, eToro, which I do not recommend anybody to sign up. And I'll tell you why. You just read that little thing, that little blurb right there. But I go with everything as far as like the buying fees. Now you can see why I don't like Coinbase. Uh, selling fees, staking fees, loans, funny accounts, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then interest rates and just so you know like like with interest and things like that i mean this is amazing try getting this type of interest from your bank um from anything right so like for bitcoin four percent and then with voyager three and a half percent ethereum 3.82 some of the highest ones are usdt tether 8.69 8.69 imagine that 8.69 in the bank good luck getting that and there's a bunch of them it ranges everywhere from like like a low to like three percent for gold or whatever uh to all the way up to 8.69 and you actually get even more if you hold the celsius token so uh this is why i mean it's just free money uh not free money but you know what i mean i mean it's in the wallet it's going to be there anyhow might as well make some money off it some kind of interest rate so you can have you can find all that there and then at the top there's affiliate links and again you don't have to use my affiliate links you can go straight to coinbase or celsius or voyager and download uh, or sign up but if you use the affiliate links like for celsius you get 25 voyager you get 25 gemini i think you get 10 yeah and then so on and so forth. So it's up to you. But the question was, and it's about security. Let me put this over too. So security, um, as far as hot cold storage and, and private keys and notes and insurance. Insurance is blank because I, I need to update this. And what I'm going to have you do is I'm, we're going to listen to uh, the man right here, Alex Mashinsky, actually tell you uh, what it is about insurance and how they insure it. 
and all the uh, uh, ins and outs. And it's this was from a, a live AMA. It was an hour and 44 minutes. I stayed through almost all of it. I mean, it's a lot of information. And I broke it all down because I don't need you guys to sit there for an hour and 44 minutes listening to this. I just give you the stuff that I think you need to know. But uh, real quick, who's Alex Mashinsky? This is from right from their website. This is the guy. Alex is the inventor of VOIP or Voice Over Internet Protocol. So, all the things that we use as far as Voice Over, um, you know, for all the different audio that we have on the on the internet, uh, this is the guy that actually created it all the way back when. And he's got uh, patents to bang up ninety four. He's now working on MoIP, which is Money Over Internet. Uh, we know what he calls it, which we all uh, know as DeFi and cryptocurrency assets. But he's got over thirty five patents relating to exchanges, VoIP protocols, messaging communication. He's an entrepreneur and founder of seven New York City-based startups. He's raised more than a billion and exited over three billion. Alex founded two of New York City's top 10 venture-backed exits since 2000. One of his first companies, Air Bennett, IPO'd in 2004 with a value of 750 million. Transit Wireless at 1.2 billion. Been nominated uh, Entrepreneur of the year, year. I mean, look, the guy's pretty dynamic, fantastic. I'm not going to go over the whole thing, but uh, this AMA was pretty good. So, this is the question that I was waiting for the whole time, and it took me to an hour and 16 minutes to get to it. And they asked him, How do you ensure um, all the different digital assets that we put on Celsius? How do you ensure that? So, it's a little bit long, but it's important that everybody knows this so they get it if they're going to get into Celsius. So Alex, this question's for you, it comes from Bob. Uh, why is there no insurance offered for deposits of Bitcoin? How do I know you'll be around to return the Bitcoin? So when you give us Bitcoin, it's not like it's ours, right? It's yours. Legally, it is still your Bitcoin. The only thing we do is when you lend us your Bitcoin, we lend them to people who pay us interest. When they return them, it goes back to the wallet and it's still yours from that wallet. So, so the question is really, is the wallet insured? And you hear all over the place people saying, I have insurance, I have insurance. Great, let's dig into it, right? So, so you know, maybe Ronnie is not going to tell me. Ronnie's probably whispering in my ear right now saying, don't use names out. Don't get yourself in trouble. Just use generic terms. Don't use any company name. But many of these companies that, that offer insurance Many of these companies in the U.S., in Europe, everyone who claims they have insurance, there's no question that they have insurance, right? We all agree. Like when, when uh, uh, Gemini tells you they have $225 million insurance, yes, for sure. I have no doubt that, that the Winklevoss twins bought insurance from Lloyd's or somewhere else. And when you store coins in cold storage of Gemini, they are insured and protected. And it's one of the best places to... Uh, put your stuff in cold storage, right? And uh, end of sentence, right? Let's start a new sentence. Now, to earn yield, there is no scenario where you can keep stuff in cold storage and earn yield at the same time. Because the only way you earn yield is how Celsius invented this whole category, is rehypothecating the asset. What does it mean to rehypothecate? You took the keys and you gave them to somebody else. You lent them out hopefully to an institution. You don't want to lend them out to some retail guy who may, not, who may disappear with them, which is what some other guys are doing. Celsius only lends to institutions. So we give the key to an institution. We say, okay, we trust you, but trust but verify, right? That's what uh, Reagan taught us. We trust you, but give me some cash. Let's put some cash in a bank account while you hold the keys. That's a collateral, right? And... I'm going to charge you interest in Bitcoin. I gave you Bitcoin keys. Give me Bitcoin. Let, let's say, I don't know, t round numbers, 10% a year. Here's 100 Bitcoins. At the end of the year, I want 110. Then when they return the 110 Bitcoin, it goes back to cold storage. Then it's insured. By the time it was out, it's not insured at all. So insurance is not uh, applicable because of the business model. So you want to earn interest? There is no insurance. Now, while it's moving through, when you move it out of a cold wallet, you have to put it in a hot wallet. And Celsius currently is the only company in the world that'll, that actually has insurance while it's moving. We don't have insurance while it's lent out, but we have insurance while it's moving in and out. And we're lending it to you or out because we're using Fireblocks, which is a MPC company and the insurance companies are comfortable that this is the best technology in the world. And that's why they insured it for $20 million. Uh, and in, so, in, in two and a half years, 
We have not had a single institution that did not return the coin or did not pay interest or even was late. We issued hundreds and hundreds of margin calls to different institutions during all the ups and downs in the last two and a half years, probably thousands of them, right? And we had not had a single incident where an institution said, oh, I'm in trouble or I'm late or I gave the coins to somebody else and I don't have them. Everyone had to pay the, the pot, the, what they borrowed, gave it back or gave us more collateral if they had a margin call and everybody had to pay interest, paid the full interest. We did not even have a single case where somebody said, you know what, here is half of the interest. And that, that, that just tells you the quality of the institutions that we're working with. Now, let's compare that to other people, right? And let's compare it to what happened on March 12 or in November and so on, where, where all these flash crashes happen. And you can see, just go on Twitter and put any company you want that is competing with Celsius and the word liquidation or the world margin call or the world whatever, word Right, put those words in and you will see hundreds of people complaining of how they got whacked and liquidated and, and charged crazy fees, a stability fee or liquidation fee or I don't know what fee, right? 16%, 20%. Find one person that got liquidated by Celsius or that got charged a fee by Celsius for any of these things in two and a half years. Okay, hundreds of thousands of transactions. Next question. Thank you. So two things. First of all, I wish they would put this, uh, like this video, I wish they would chop up this video and put this on their company's website in the FAQ section and just have Alex explain that part. Because when you go to their, 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 their FAQ, when I ask, ask you about like, hey, um, you know, is this insured? Primage says, no, uh, this is not insured at this point. And it's kind of like a very generic, bland, vanilla type of thing. And people are like, well, that sucks. But when Alex talks about it, it, it makes total sense. Like, okay, okay, well, that's, that's why I, I understand. So that's that. And then there was one more thing, and hopefully you got time uh, to listen to this. But this was a question from one of the subscribers, Droplet. And he said, hey, he said, at some point, I may pass on, or I will pass on, and we're all going to die, right? And um, I have a concern about my wife. You know, we're both up there in years. She doesn't understand cryptocurrency, digital assets, you know, and then where he lives, he's like, they don't understand all this stuff, and I have a ledger, and they're not going to get it. So even though I leave instructions, it can be very difficult for them. So how do I make sure uh, of all these things? So um, to answer Droplet's question, this was actually – uh, asked to Ronnie here in the upper right hand corner. Ronnie is the, uh, I guess, like the legal department for, for Celsius. He resides in Israel and he gives legal advice, compliance, all that stuff. So, Ronnie, I'm hoping you can help me out with uh, this question. It comes from James. Are there any plans to include inheritance preferences within the app? If uh, somebody it, it, dies, how do how do people. Oh, uh, so, so, so I just uh, didn't hear that. Um, so, first of all, uh, the fact that Celsius connects uh, the account. Uh, to a specific individual makes it um, traceable. Uh, the fact that someone can come and say, hey, this is my, uh, my parent account, this is uh, his will, uh, release uh, the tokens for me, that's the advantages of, your, of money held by, uh, you know, not uh, only through a private key, but rather through someone that is, again, sorry for that, regulated and has the full obligation towards you uh, and therefore your uh, successors. Uh, so if they will come and show uh, that they really have um, a claim for this money uh, based on the jurisdiction where the client is based, uh, my advice to says this uh, will be releasing this money in accordance with uh, with the law in the specific ju ju jurisdiction. And obviously, Celsius has the technical ability to do so, especially if you... Um, if you compare it to a uh, decentralized solution or having your uh, own key, which has its own uh, uh, benefits, uh, but I can only speak about uh, Celsius business model. And therefore, in this case, uh, all, uh, first of all, sorry for uh, their loss. Uh, and second of all, uh, Celsius will be obligated to release the funds uh, once appropriate uh, evidence will be shown to it. And we, we, but just to add to that, we are adding in the app uh, the ability of you as the uh, the parent or the uncle or the, the husband to designate your uh, uh, legal uh, person who they still have to show up documentation. They're still going to have to show up uh, a death certificate or whatever is the law in the in the land where where we have to comply. 
but at least we can match one to another, right? So we can say, okay, this is what you told us. This is the, the claimant. Okay, let's make sure that we're talking about the same person. So that's pretty cool because you never know. I mean, you could be walking on the street, get hit by a bus, and then off, then you're done, right? We'll see how that all works out. But that is just one of those options that I thought was pretty cool. And hopefully that answered one of Droplet's questions. So, all right. So thanks for sticking with me through the uh, video. It was a little bit longer, a lot of stuff going on. But just remember, uh, even though that we are pumping like crazy, uh, keep a level head. Um, there are a lot of things that are overbought right now. And there is a correction probably coming. So, but uh, hey. You never know, it's cryptocurrency. But before you take off, I just want to do random shout outs. If you don't know, there's a join now button underneath. Uh, you don't get anything special. It's pretty much like a tip, but uh, people sign up and I want to say thanks. So just random uh, Chuck C. Let's see what we got. Metals Man 75, um, True Blue One, uh, Beloved, and Robert Christensen. And uh, so thanks everybody, really appreciate it. If you like these types of videos, there's gonna be two more that are gonna pop up on your left and right. Don't know which ones they are because YouTube controls all that. And that's it. And you want to do uh, watch those, check those out. And that's it for today. I'll see you on the next one.